Dicebreaker, and hello to everyone watching from the Metaverse. We are Dicebreaker, if you've not seen us before, we are a tabletop site in which we talk about board games, card games, and more importantly for this video, RPGs. We are going to be playing Blades in the Dark today by John Harper. I am joined by the rest of the Dicebreaker cast. Would you all like to introduce yourself, starting with Johnny? Hello, my name is Johnny Chiodini. I am head of video, and that's my name and, and job got title. Alex Meehan. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm Alex Meehan. I'm staff writer for Dicebreaker.com. And who's that? Is it Matt Jarvis? <gasps> well, <Where>? it's me. <laughs> oh, I didn't see you there. Uh, yes, it, I'm Matt Jarvis. I'm the editor in chief of Dicebreaker. I am also and the here. award for most normal outfit goes to Alex Lowlies. <laughs> Hello, I'm Alex Lillies. I'm part of the video team. Uh, that's me. Welcome. So, we're going to be playing some Blades in the Dark today. If you've not played Blades in the Dark before, this is uh, a system called Forged in the Dark. This is the original book that it came from. Essentially, we're going to be rolling D6s, and we're going to be taking the best result whenever we take, it, uh, take any kind of skill test. But essentially, in this game, we're all going to be playing like sub-archetypes of rogues. So there's going to be the sneaky rogue, there's going to be the stabby rogue, there's going to be the, the puppet master rogue. Um, we'll introduce the characters in a second, but first let me introduce the world. We are playing in a place called Dustfall. Uh, if you've ever played Dishonored, then you've got a pretty good idea of how it looks. Um, it's a sort of Victorian steampunky world. Uh, the entire place is completely submerged in black darkness. Because at some point there was an event called the Cataclysm in which the sun exploded. Shock horror, that means that there's not very much light on the planet anymore. Um, not only did the Cataclysm stop all sunlight from happening, but it also had some kind of adverse effect where nobody ever went to the afterlife anymore, and now the entire world is completely littered with ghosts. Which means that Dustfall has had to be quite creative with how they keep spirits at bay and out of the city. So there's two ways, mainly, that they do that. First of all, if anyone dies, there is a system whereby they have to destroy the body within three days, otherwise a new ghost will appear, and it will be very angry and trying to kill everyone around it. And second of all, they've built a giant electroplasmic wall around the city to stop the massive amounts of ghosts that are outside in the wastes from coming in. Electroplasm being a power source which is derived from demon's blood. It's about the most heavy metal setting that you can think of. Um, and we're going to be playing one of the various gangs and crews in the city. Everyone in Dustfall is basically in a crew, but let's introduce the one that we are in today. Uh, we have a group of shadows. Is that right, Johnny? It is correct, yes. Uh, yeah. We are a crew of shadows. We've called ourselves the yeah. Chancers. Because, uh, you know, everyone deserves a second chance, and we are definitely sort of taking ours. In Duskfall, we are, we are sneaky. We like to steal things. We have contacts and ambitions. <laughs> and at the minute, no money. Dreams, ambitions. Well, in the same way that we um, introduced your real-life personas, please tell me all about your characters. Oh. A bit, I, I like to think that this is my actual persona. <laughs> my real life persona is just the lie. <laughs> it's all the front. Yeah, go on then, me and you start. Off me and then. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, my persona is a, what's called a slide, which means they're kind of manipulative and they, they use their charms to get people on their side. Um, uh, my slide is called Count Sebastiano Divaldi. <laughs> Uh, he is a young man who wears quite dashing clothing, but it's it's seen better days. Uh, and he's got he he's got quite an ego and an air about him, uh, and he likes to create you know an impression uh, and potentially a distraction for the his, the rest of his crew right, well, members. Let's, let's stick with the so, Alex's then, and let's see what Alex Lowley's has in store yeah. for us. Hello, my character's name is Edna, uh, also known as the Foreigner. Um, I hail from a place called Ticharus, which uh, in, in the book is described as a semi-mythical place. Um, so I, that's hence why I'm known as a Foreigner. I'm a spider, um, which is some kind of devious mastermind. Um, yes, I have based myself on a Disney villain. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's wondering. Um, one of the things I want to uh, explain, because I don't actually have them on me, um, is that 
my character actually has these like weird markings all on her skin um, that almost look like really faded road maps. Um, and that is part of being from Titras again, and just a weird thing that people have there, I guess. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an ex noble, also. Um, anyone who's right. interested. And then Matt Jarvis. Hello, I'm playing Pilfers, and my alias is The Clown, <laughs> which might give you some oh, no. idea of my background. I am a former circus clown. Um, the circus sadly disbanded and now sadly. Pilfers is out in the world <laughs> trying to look for the same kind of frills and excitement um, as they as they uh, experienced in the circus. I am playing a lurk, or Pilfers is a lurk, uh, which is essentially a quite stealthy burglar type um, who can infiltrate and pick locks and whatnot, mm. despite being dressed in an old clown How costume. colourful is this oh, uh, it's, it's very much a kind of faded... So is it Peraway, the the uh, Ashes to Ashes, David mm. Bowie, like classic French, off-white Stripy. kind yeah, of yeah. looking? Yeah. Sure, yeah. Let's say it's stripy. <laughs> Why not? Bobbles? Um, Any bobbles? The pom-poms. Yeah, oh, yeah. plenty of bobbles, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, They're stealthier yeah. that way. The more bobbles well, you soft, have, right? the yeah, quieter they you They dampen noise. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. Uh, And last but not least, uh, I hear there's a street urchin in the gang. Yeah. Uh, my my name is uh, Luca, but uh, everyone calls me Inco. Uh, I'm basically a, a street urchin. I grew up in Aruvia, uh, and I've come to Duskfall because uh, basically it was too easy picking pockets there, and I heard Duskfall was a bit more of a challenge. Uh, so I, basically, I look like that. Your typical street urchin is going to sell you a paper and then runs <laughs> off with with your wallet. Uh, I am a leech, which means that I am basically a saboteur. Um, slash sort of tinkerer I can I can manipulate things uh, to devastating effect um, in some weird and wonderful ways which hopefully will uh, will out over the course of the session all right oh, so how exciting so normally mm. in Blades in the dark um, you will go for a long campaign where the the players will sort of choose adventures to, to go on and it's all very much it's, you're not following a set path, you're just saying, alright, what do we want to achieve today, and you're going to go for that. Although in this special occasion, you've been given a very, very special job. Um, as sort of experts of the thieving trade, you've been picked out for something that requires an expert hand. Um, and the story goes like a little like this. An ancient noble, said to be immortal like the Emperor, Lord Skurlock, is a powerful and dangerous force to reckon with. But in dangerous places lie the most valuable treasures. And on one such object is the focus of your task. It is said that the vessel of the old gods can trap the soul of a demon. If Skurlock were to find you taking it, however, it is not the souls of demons that you should be worried about. You have been uh, tasked by a number of shady and shadowy organisations to try and take this vessel from Lord Skurlock's control. You're not entirely sure what they want to do with it, but you're not the kind of people to ask questions in the first place. Um, so we're going to do what is called the engagement role at the start of this, where we're going to decide um, how well your prep for this has gone. In Blaze in the Dark, everything happens in the moment. If you ever want to establish that something happened as prep, we flash back to that and then we get back into the action. So we're going to jump straight into the start of the adventure by using the engagement role. So first of all, I'm going to ask you guys what kind of um, plan this is. So the options for you are Assault, mm. Deception, Stealth, Occult, Social and Transport. Probably the most likely one is stealth, which is to trespass unseen. Um, you could maybe assault the target by doing violence to them to try and nick it, but it depends what you guys are after. Well, we're either trying to sneak our way in, or some of us are trying to sneak our way in while the slide talks their way in. It's, it's sort of probably that's that's sort of the way I see it going. So it's either all sneaky or some sneaky, some talky. Can we do that? Yeah, can you can have multiple points multi? of entry. But that means multiple that engagement probably roles. sounds like a good idea. <laughs> ah! Um, mm, quick, maybe all sneaky. I don't know. Quick aside. Um, are we discussing this within the game as a group? Or is this a meta thing? Well, it's, it's, it's half meta, half in character, right? Because you're, you're basically, you're planning, right, what's, what are we going to try and okay. do? And then based on what you're going to try and do, I'm going to ask for one detail, which will decide how things kick off. And then we're going to go through uh, a number of questions which basically say, how well prepared for this are you? How daring is this mission? That kind of thing. Hmm. 
Okay, it might be a good idea to discuss the issue of whether we should multi, uh, do a multi approach or whether we should just full stealth in character, maybe. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so what, we're at our hideout, probably, uh, wherever that is, um, and we're all sat around discussing the plan. Um, and let's say the Count uh, says, So, uh, how do we think we should approach this particular task, my friends? Nice and quiet. We shadows, so isn't we? Funny. So we all do a sneak around, break through the back, pass yeah. the guards unseen, that sort Some of thing. Some kind of somersault, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe a somersault or two in there. Yeah, 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 sneaky. Mm, yes. Uh, I mean, I could always sort of go in and, and make some sort of distraction, and then you guys could go around and. Oh, oh, oh just a suggestion. No. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other views, preferably different ones? Uh, I think Pilfers has a balloon in their hands, and they're just, you know when someone rubs their hands on a balloon, and it's making that really unpleasant kind of like, <laughs> noise, uh, and they're just like, yes, yes, sneaky, yes, Pilfers, yes, oh. yes, <laughs> sneak. Oh, boy. <laughs> I thought oh, more yeah. fun, more fun to sneak. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure I've oh. heard that voice in Crash Team Racing before. <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh, um, we're locked on deception on uh, stealth rather then. Everyone's everyone's happy with stealth. Yeah, I say that. everyone's yeah. happy. If me and if you would like to do your own infiltration for the front door, you're more than welcome to. But it would mean that you're doing your own. Uh, Engagement role entirely on your own, and you'll be on your own with no people to help you. Yes, uh, I'll go with so... you if you want. If you want someone to go with you, don't oh. leave me with the clown. <laughs> <laughs> That's irresponsible. Uh, Pilfer sidles up to you like, "Yes, we'll have a you good sa- time." You sound like I'm trying to remember the name of the kind of character. It's like a like a young Frankenstein type, <laughs> like, yeah, no, no, Charlie, no, it's like in the, oh, no, <laughs> no, no, no not this. at all, um, yeah, uh, okay, well, the Count's gonna go, um, well, I don't want to be separated from the rest of the group, there's no fun in that, um, and if you really don't want to be left with the clown, I suppose, We'll just have to go in all sneaky light again. Alrighty then. We did it last time. And we're Pilfers does look time. a little hurt at this, by the way. <laughs> Aww. Okay, so stealth. You're going to try and trespass unseen, which means that I'm going to ask for one detail, which is, what is the point of infiltration? How are you going to get into the manor? Uh, windows. Is there any, like, basement windows or something? Where it's, like, lead into a, a kitchen you can or... You certainly try to find one, yeah. Yeah. Is there Ooh, any? Do we know? Bless you. <laughs> do we know what kind of manor this is? Is it like quite an it's old? Large, it's large, sprawling, and dilapidated. Um, it's old. Okay. For a point um, of reference, if anyone played Dishonored Two, then it is the the time loop missing. Uh, might I suggest perhaps uh, looking for some sort of uh, crumbled entryway, maybe down the lower level somewhere that might have. Uh, Created a convenient hole for us to get into. Yes. Perhaps look for something like that. Look for some wear and tear. Do we have an idea of where the the thing we're trying to retrieve Absolutely is within no the manor? How much? The Skullock's manor okay. is so we... incredibly intimidating and mysterious that nobody has any idea what's inside. Okay. So I think that's our point of entry. Is is let's <clears> do. <throat> Like infiltration, like stealthy, and point of entry is sort of basement. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right then. So we're always going to start off with one d six for sheer luck, um, but then we're going to add and uh, minus as we go. But Johnny, I think the crew has a special skill which will help you with this, right? Um. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, a, a special ability called Second Story, which uh, says when you execute clandestine infiltration, you get plus one d to the That's engagement roll to start off with. 
Um, would you say that this operation is particularly bold or daring? I'm just going to go ahead and say yes, it absolutely is. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. it's Lord Bloody Skurlock. <laughs> uh, is this operation... As yeah, Lord Bloody Skurlock is his full name. Is this operation overly complex or contingent on many factors? No. We don't even know what we're doing. We're getting in there. We're sneaking, yeah. sneaking in and taking some. Does out. the plan's detail expose a vulnerability of the target or hit them where they're weakest? Yes. His, it's a, a very important item to him. Very well. It's I'll a give crappy you that. house. Um, is the target strongest against this approach or do they have a particular defense or special preparations? Yes, they do. I'm going to take one die out. In, in fairness, S's yeah. house, isn't it? <laughs> Does anyone have any friends or rivals that might either help or interfere with this operation? So the st when you create your character, you pick um, one positive and one uh, negative relationship with some of the characters in Dust Bowl. You can call upon for help or um, might infiltrate and ruin your plans. One of, oh no, what's a blue code? A blue code is basically a police. Well, it's a it's a blue coat archivist, so I'm assuming that's not gonna. It's sort of weird, interfere. ghostly stuff. Okay. Um, I yeah, I've my my positive contacts in apothecary, and I'm not friends with the priestess, <laughs> so I'm gonna say I'm bringing I'm bringing nothing to the table on this one. I, my my friend is an information broker. Again, don't really know what that means. Well, that they, they basically use? sell info. I I will, I will say that yeah. if um, if you want to take a bit of stress from the get go. I'll allow you to uh, to add a D to your engagement role because they've given you some info on on uh, a particularly weak point of entry. Okay. Don't really yeah. know yet. Yeah. What's the yeah. fallout currently? How many well, dice have we got so three. far? That would bring you to four. Three. Four's uh, pretty great odds, but three three's fine if you don't want to start out with stress, like, Lily's. Like, what does, what does stress, stress mean is basically exactly a currency again? for how well you can do things. So whenever you want to push yourself to give yourself an extra die, you'll spend stress. Um, usually when you flash back to things to try and make the world a little bit easier around you, you'll use stress as well. Uh, if you ever cap out and do too much stress, you'll experience trauma, which basically means that you've become so stressed that it's had a horrible lasting effect on the rest of your life. Um, know that feel, okay. but if you, <laughs> if um, I feel like Edna's probably pretty stressed, so let's give her some okay. stress. So if you to... take two stress, then uh, I will give okay. you an extra D to to basically say that you've you've found an incredibly good point of entry. So this is going to be a pretty good engagement role. Um, Could I propose? So uh, Pilfers is uh, let's not say friends, let's say acquaintances uh, with Rosalind Kellis, a noble. Um, so, Ow. with Ow. the, they the they, birthday party, so Rosalind, they went to school together. Yeah, she, she attended too. the circus when she was young, <laughs> and met Pilfers, and they formed a lasting friendship um, that has endured since the end of the circus. <laughs> oh, gosh, very wholesome. Um, so, with with the permission of uh, Lolies and Wills, uh, if I take one of the two stress. And so we gain the same effect, yeah, but we split the stress between fine. us. Um, so you're saying that she's a noble, therefore uh, she may have even been to this house at some point. Exactly, yeah. So just asking whether there have been any parties. And we can maybe, along with the information from the information broker, kind of gather the same information, yeah. but between us. How do you feel about that, Lilies? Perfect. Like All right, it. let's do this engagement <laughs> roll. Let's crack in. So we've got 46. If you get a six, you're going to be in a very controlled position. Everything's going incredibly smoothly. A four or a five mm -hmm. means that you're in a risky position, but everything's all right. A one, a two, or a three means that something bad has happened, and we're going to be straight into some uh, some complications. But we're going to take the best result out of From the off. Six. And that is a six. There it is. Hey! So, a good start. A good start. So, we cut straight into the action. You have found um, what looks to have been some kind of uh, service entrance where perhaps people would bring in uh, food and, and fuel and all that kind of thing into the servants' quarters underneath the manor. Um, the door has rusted so much that you barely even need to struggle to just pull the thing off. Uh, and as you creep down into the darkness, um, you find yourself basically at the foot of some stairs. You whack on some kind of, um, what looks to be some kind of pull-down switch, uh, and a few sort of just... Very, very sparse, twinkly, uh, electroplasmic lights just illuminate the space before you, and it looks to be empty. Uh, so you found your point of infiltration. You're in what looks like some kind of uh, kitchen area, 
there are old um, sort of half broken bits of uh, pottery and all kinds of pots and pans that have like bent in and are hanging from the walls. The whole place is covered with a layer of dust. It is just completely unused and it looks like there's a few different ways to get out of this kitchen you know there are certain bits that go into what looked like a servant's quarters if you just sort of peek your head around the door you can see beds and stuff um but there is also a staircase at the far end of the room that appears to go up into uh the the manor proper we hand over to you does he get all his food delivered or something you think big manor a lot of mouths to feed he'd want food Yes, I, I can't appear to hear anyone at all. Not a single, single person. Uh, it, it's definitely quiet in here. Anyone else feeling that at all? I'm enjoying the silence. <laughs> it's a nice change. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, maybe, maybe he just doesn't eat. Mm, maybe eat something sinister. Other people, maybe. Children. Do we have children this call? Piss <laughs> off. <laughs> Says the Luke child. child. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, at oh. This point, he's no longer oh, sure yeah. whether he's telling you to piss off for trying to scare him or telling you to piss off because you just wondered whether or not he exists. <laughs> well, I, I actually didn't realise you were a child. So um, I think, in hindsight... Let me, like, I would have leaned down and whispered that in his ear. Like, our children to try and actually do that. Uh, then don't... I'm, I'm going to turn around and whisper, <laughs> piss off in your face. <laughs> piss off. D- don't worry, Luca, we, we won't let him eat you. Um, uh, do we know uh, where we should go now? Maybe up, up some stairs or up to a higher floor? Yes. Oh. Let us well, be going then. I forgot what my voice <laughs> <laughs> Well, someone's got to take charge here. Where we, we, we headed? Where are you headed, Dan? Um, yeah, the so op, on literally on the opposite side of the room, past all of the the old hobs and things like that, there is um, a staircase that seems to have a door at the top, uh, which you would assume would would lead up onto ground level again. Is there anything else? Any to the other left, way? there's some kind of servants' um, quarters, and to the right, there's a door that uh, it seems to be some kind of storage unit. Would it make sense to go through the servants' quarters? I, just we, we'll will pick come. one at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, there may perhaps be some sort of secret staircase from the servants' quarters higher up. I've heard that. Well, I, I've definitely been to other nobles' houses and definitely seen staircases like that before. Um, we could have a look for one there. Is that something I could have found out from my information broker? Um, we So, let me introduce a, a game mechanic to you here. Um, so, <gasps> in Blades in the Dark, there is no planning stages or prepping. Everything happens in the moment and then we flash back to anything relevant. So, if you would like to flash back mm-hmm. and establish something is true... Yes. I will basically tell you what that will cost mm-hmm. to do. So if you say, I'd like to flash okay. back to talking with my information broker and he gives me some information on X, Y, or Z, um, then I will say, okay, that will cost you an amount of stress or some reputation or something like that. You basically just say, okay. flashback. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm okay. not going to flashback. I think, I, I'm, I think I'm pretty happy to just assume that the servants' quarters will have some kind of secret um, passageways going around. Can I flash back to, to imagine talking to one of my contacts? Absolutely. Is that something what, you can do, or the contacts contact just for... Who are you talking to? Um, I have a contact. Um, her name is mm-hmm. Nerix. Um, she is... Um, she is a, a person who is nice to other people. <laughs> In exchange for money, <laughs> I don't know what the parameters are of Nurex doing is a sex this video. That's fine. So. Yeah. Oh, it's a therapist. Oh, a okay. Sex yeah, I misread fine. that no. one. No, no. Yeah, she's a sex worker. Um, so yeah, he is going to flash back, and he's talking to her. Uh, let's say at a bar mm-hmm. somewhere, uh, and he's going to say, um, 
And in your many years of, of fine work, Nurix, have you ever, you know, been to a noble's house before? Oh, I've been to plenty of noble's houses, love. Don't you worry about that. Mm, well, I imagine you have. Um, yes. Uh, what kind of, uh, you know, structure are we talking about? Uh, are there any places you've been that maybe you know, normal... Like, all guests might not have gone Are you implying before. something, mate? Spit it out. Well, you, you know, um, is, is there perhaps any secret passageways or things like that uh, located in these, these well, yeah, places? Well, yeah, I mean, there's always a secret passageway. I mean, that's usually how they get me in, what with their wives being in and all. But, uh, I mean, most of the time, it's to get into the house, you know? Not not as many that I've I've experience myself inside the building uh but it depends on the mansion you're in to be honest love every single one's been built pretty much to their specifications so depends on how weird your client is if you know what i mean hmm. uh what if we're talking an especially weird uh and rather powerful client just just uh hypothetically speaking you got a job or something Well, I don't want to talk too much, but uh, it's a very grand job. Um, oh, look, I mean, give, uh, give me a name and maybe uh, I've heard of him. Okay. Uh, the name is... Is it Skylark again? Skurlock. Sorry. The name is uh, Skurlock. I must she have heard of him rears before. up like a deer in headlights and says... You want to find yourself another job, mate. She shots the gin she was sipping on and leaves promptly. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you for any stress on that, but it seems, like, uh, it seems like most of the people that you've tried to gather information about from Lord Skurlock, uh, about Lord Skurlock from, rather, um, promptly don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> I guess flash forward, and he's like, well, I I tried to talk to someone about maybe there being secret passageways and manners and things, but unfortunately, uh, couldn't really confirm or deny. You don't so know I many guess... people who have entered Lord Skellock's Manor who have lived to tell the tale, so it's difficult to get information about okay. sort of the, uh, the internal workings of it. However, there are a couple of people who have, you know, have paid a visit. Um, the strange thing is they all seem to have very differing stories about the insides of the manor. Either this place is massive, or it's it's like they rebuild it every time somebody comes around. Um, I So, um, Enko's gonna sort of shot... Sorry, me and what's your character's name again? I've forgotten. <laughs> uh, you know my character is uh, Count Sebastiano I'm Vivaldi. Call you the count. Yeah, yeah, the, ca the count. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Inko's just going to sort of shoulder the count out of the way, um, just being like stuffy talk, and say, "Look, <laughs> let's just go. If there are servants, I'm an adorable lost child looking for a crust of bread, please, sir. Be fine. You go on. Maybe you go on ahead. I'm. I'm off. I'm already gone. <laughs> Yay, child labour. Oh, right, let's do it. Um, so which, which direction are you heading, Johnny? Uh, into the servants' course, this is trying to find wherever okay. up is. Like, even if it's a dumbwaiter. Just, I'm trying to get a sense of how they get stuff up without being seen by the so quality. You... Well, if you come across a smart razor. <laughs> you push yourself into the servants' quarters, ignoring any puns that come your way. Uh, and as you walk in, uh -huh. um, you get, like, the musty smell of rot. Like, it's... This place has not been um, sort of looked after at all. It's almost like they forgot it was down here. Uh, but as you head in, the, the walls are literally lined with bunk beds. Um, and the worrying thing is, have you got any kind of light source? Uh, let's let's have a look. Let's see what's on my, my little my character sheet. Uh yeah, I, I'm happy to spend a box of load for a lantern. Oh, one thing I should have asked you all, by the way, was what load you are. So look, just like with um, prep, <clears throat> all of your items, you can essentially have any item you want, but you pick how many, uh, how heavy your load is going to be when you enter the, the operation. So if you were going to a very like social deduction kind of thing, you might not want to be 
dress like you were uh, armed for a fight, so you might go for a light load. But if you're going in to rough some people up, you might go for heavy. That essentially tells you how many boxes you can tick. And then at any point during the adventure, you could just tick a box to say, oh, actually, I've got this with me because I packed it knowing I would need it. Just like you would with the flashback. So I've gone in normal, which gives me five boxes, and I've just ticked one to okay, give me a so lantern. Would you like to shine your lantern to get a better view in here? So as you do yeah, so... Yeah, go on um, Just open it up a yeah, tiny it's a bit. like one there that you might use to send signals. Yeah. So you, you, you open the shutter of your mm -hmm. electroplasmic lantern, and as you flash it around... Um, to your horror, uh, you see every single one of these bunks uh, is just lined with bodies, just lying like this, eyes closed. All of them gaunt and grey fleshed, like corpses. Um, you can't be sure if they're dead, but every single bed is currently being slept in. Slept in. <laughs> ah. An eternal sleep. <laughs> I think. So, I would like to do mm -hmm. two things. Firstly, I would like to turn around and go... Okay, so, when we went... Sorry, before we went into the servants' quarters, uh, was did we see another way into the house? Like, this isn't the only path through. Oh, there'll through. be windows and... Yeah, like, there, there are other ways to get into the house, but this this was the, the most direct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm gonna sort of, I'm gonna beckon everyone then to come towards me. We're gonna just be like, and just point at the weird bunks. I say, dear, dear fellow, what have you found? Oh, oh, <laughs> scary! I don't like loud noises. Uh, as I'm looking at the clowns. As, as you're looking over the corpses, sleeping. you see like uh, some kind of spider just crawl over the forehead of one of the people lying in the beds. I say, old chap, it's a, that's a lot of bodies, isn't it? Um, is there a sort of door we can pass through into a, to a different part the of, the, of the um... of the room? There, there does appear, appear to be some kind of door. You're not entirely sure what's on the other side, but it does seem to lead into other other quarters. Okay, can we pop you it open? To walk past all the bodies first. <laughs> yeah, can we? Okay, I'm going to ask that? you to, to perform an action roll, Johnny. Um, so in oh, Blades, you will choose the action that you're taking, but. Some will be more effective than others, and I'll always need to ask you how you're doing it and why that makes sense. Yep. Uh, so I, let's call this a prowl roll because I'm sneaking. Um, I've only got one D in prowl. You could push yourself, uh, or somebody else could try and help you in exchange for stress. Yeah. Uh, I'll help. So as as a um, as a companion of someone doing an action, you can spend one stress to help someone. Or if you want to help yourself, essentially, if you want to push yourself, you spend two stress. But you'll always describe to me how you're helping, if you want to do so, that is. Mm. Well, oh, um, okay, well, he's yeah. a child, right? So pick I could up. just <laughs> pick him up. <laughs> Classic. Like, literally just like, I, I don't think I'd even be very, like, gentle about it. I think under I'd literally just, like, <laughs> under the arm. Um, okay, so if you spend it... Mm. Like a I think I think like Edna is uh, doesn't really trust mm. kids, so I I think she's like just well, doesn't as, trust as a that Disney villain. Like, kids do terrible like, things to you, right? So uh, <laughs> could you then spend a stress, please, uh, and then Johnny, you'll get an extra die on your roll. That is cocked. Uh, okay, so four, four or five so, is a partial success. Yeah. Uh, a six, a six is a success, and a one, two, or three is a failure. So for a four. Um, so what's going to happen is you're, you're basically sort of like halfway through sneaking across the floorboards when one just creaks and you find yourself just sort of static and motionless in the middle, just looking at all of these bodies around you, hoping that none of them move. And then thankfully you feel an arm just come around you. Uh, and as you notice that it's the, the long, very uh, glamorous nails of Edna picking you up, you're like, oh, thank God. Um, as you're picked up under the arm, Edna just sort of like sneaks around the floorboard that seemed to creak, and you manage to get across to the door, leaving the other two behind. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that? Uh, no. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so they've mm-hmm. made it across. Um, so, um, yeah, the Count's going to turn and look at Pilfers. Say, come on, that old chap. Let's try and get over there. No squeaking now. Um, Pilfers just <laughs> instinctively reaches for where their, their clown nose used to be. Oh. So their nose is all scabbed from decades oh. of wearing a clown nose, but they no longer wear it. And they just uh, squeeze their nose and then go, quietly, quietly. Oh, Jesus, oh, Matt! No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm always scared when, of you to, like, talking. It's so, um, are you, both, uh, but are you they, both trying to sneak over at the same time? Uh, I think um, I think the Count Sebastiano is going to go so first. So what you could do, there's another mechanic that you can use in place of the dark, is we could lead a group action, which means that one of you can lead, um, but then whoever else contributes will also get to roll their dice with you. So you'll you'll all do the exact yeah. same action rating, whether it be Prowl or Hunt or whatever. Um, you'll roll all your dice and take the best result out of every single one. But for any one person whose best result was a one to three, the person leading the group action will take stress. Okay. Um, I think, yes, Vastiano is going to lead, uh, basically lead Pilfers, like, past these Okay, these so bodies. what action are you using? Yeah. Are you going to go for Prowl, like the, the guys behind? Yeah, okay. yeah, he's going to Prowl. So if you both um... roll all of your Prowl dice, and then uh, tell me which of you has the best result. I've got two in parallel. I got a four. That's my highest result. I got a okay, five. Perfect. So no stress Yay. and you manage to lead yourselves across. Once again, you, you just mm. feel that creaky floorboard. Like you're just about to put your foot in it and then you remember the noise that it made for the previous group. Mm. Just lean over. Um, and as you put your hand down, uh, you realize you're leaning on one of the beds, but not on the the poster board, but it feels like a foot. Um, And you just unfurl your hand and look at the body just still motionless and still. Um, And you just like creep away, hoping that nothing has happened Mm. uh, and manage to reach the rest of the group. I think as Pilfers moves, they, before they take a step, they move the, the soft bobble from the top of their foot to the bottom as an extra bit of padding. <laughs> I was about to ask how squeaky and your after... shoes were. <laughs> oh, they're not, you know, Pilfers is a professional. Um, a professional in all regards. Um, but after the count touches the foot, um, as they go, Pilfers just gently puts the blanket over the foot to cover it again <laughs> and keeps moving. Okay, so you've, you've reconvened now. You're at this door. Um, like you, you test the handle. It seems to not be locked, thankfully, but you haven't quite have the stones yet to open it. I'd like to poke my face through. So um, it opens outwards towards you, so you just sort of like peek around the corner of it. Um, And it seems to be another staircase, but this one's a lot shoddier, a lot shabbier. Um, It almost seems to be uh, like a back entrance, so that, as you said, so the servants can't be seen, right? Um, Whereas the, the previous staircase that was at the end of the kitchen very much looked like somewhere where you might walk up with a silver dish to serve food to the to the lords. Uh, this is definitely like, you know, where someone might go up to start their cleaning or something like that. Um, as we go through the door, assuming we are going through the door, I would like to be last. Um, and uh, I want to use one of my leech special abilities here. Uh, I'm going to choose Venomous. So I'm taking two stress to push myself uh, and uh, secrete... Uh, a drug or poison from my bandolier stock to which I've become immune. Uh, I can also, or I can exhale it as a vapor if I really like. Um, wheels, what I want to do is basically I want to push myself and from my palm, uh, binding oil starts bubbling up. And I want to run that around the oh. frame of the door and just push the door okay. closed. Ah. So when the binding oil sets, it's like a wall. Like the door is just Can glued you do in the fortune there. roll to see how long it takes to set? I will give you two dice. Yep. Oof, that's a three. Okay. Um, right, so here's what happens. Um, you all push yourself through the door. And as you've seen many a time, you know, this, this isn't your first job. Uh, the weird poison child gets his binding hand out again uh, and starts to just like l- coat the frame of the door just where the um, the handle is 
just to try and at least stop it so that if anything were to come through it would have some kind of trouble and as he finishes up he steps back and sort of like looks at his work and then does that and it's like oh oh god <laughs> and then just as you're turning around to um step on like you're literally just hovering your foot over the first step of the stairs you hear what sounds like a the faint ringing of a bell um like one might have on the entrance to a bookshop or something um and suddenly, from beyond the door, you hear shuffling movement. Um, <laughs> and to your horror, as you start to back up the stairs, that's a phrase I'm going to be using a lot in this adventure, I think, um, you see the <laughs> handle start to turn, and the door just sort of shakes. There's a bit of confusion. Why is an opening? Uh, and you push yourselves up the stairs as quickly as you can. Ooh. Uh, oh, well, uh, that's very interesting. Let's shall, shall we? Shall we get move on? <laughs> I I never feel. Oh, I don't know what my accent is anymore. And, uh, you can just speak don't. how you normally speak. Um, if you want. I'm just, I'm I'll just... tell you what. We could go up these stairs. I used to be a noble. Danny Tiger Ross. I sometimes remember and sometimes forget. <laughs> All I was going to say is, um, I I never fail to be disgusted by. Child, poison hand child, or whatever. Yeah, that, that kid. Oh, wait, wait, wait! You're more disgusted by the poison child than the creepy scabby nose clown. <laughs> oh, let's not oh, read into that. Hard. Let's, let's crack on. Pilfus has a pure heart. I don't think heart. I saw that. Oops, that happened in the dark on the other side of the room. I don't think I saw that. True. I mean, you've, yeah, known you've known seen him, him do that before. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are you pushing up the stairs? Okay. Yes. Um, so as you, as you get to the top, there is once again a door. Um, would anyone like to lead? Anyone? Uh, yeah? Okay, oh, so Edna once yeah. again. This time the door pushes outwards and she just peers her head round. And it appears to be some kind of dusty old... Um, like an atrium. So there there is uh, sort of like an open room. There's a few sort of chalons with um, like a, a sort of... Um, banister laden uh, platform running around the outside walls that sort of allude to the second floor of the building and then there's this great sort of quite cracked and, and some panels are missing this this great skylight window um, and as you push into the room you uh, you just start to hear the door start to giving a bit more way at the bottom of the stairs and you decide to quickly just scooch through and close the door behind you um, Taking a moment to just sort of look around uh, the sheer juxtaposition of decadence and dilapidation. Like this used to be, you can tell, such a beautiful place. And years of either mistreatment or um, maybe just abandonment have left it in, in such a state of disrepair that, um, you know, it's, it's almost sad to see such a, a lovely place in, in such a bad way. Um, and as you step out onto the, the plush carpet that is now just sort of laden with maggots and dust, um, you look up and see a shadowy figure with their hands placed firmly on the banister of the second floor staring down at you. And there is only one thing you can make out, two piercing purple eyes staring directly towards you, almost, almost seeming to look every single one of you in the eyes at once. And if you want to know what happens to our adventurers next, then please do come over to the sure. Dicebreaker YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Dicebreaker. Or you can head over to dicebreaker.com uh, for more information and more incredible writing styles as well. Uh, thank you very much for watching everyone at the Metaverse. We're going to be con yeah, continuing this adventure um, straight after this. So if you've enjoyed this, then please come on over to our YouTube channel, watch the rest of it uh, and have a good time with us. And please do leave us a subscribe. And then make sure you head on over to dicebreaker.com to get lots of fantastic articles, reviews, let's plays, all kinds of content uh, here from us. Thanks very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the Metaverse and goodbye from all of us. I hope Yay! we live. <laughs> <laughs>